down for this brain capacity, I can help patch for that. I'm going to move this out of the way because I know we're going to take to see a fat boy trip and follow this morning. How many of you glad to be here this morning? Right? Another day that the Lord has let us come out and worship Him. That should be a blessing in itself, right? Uh, so the, a preacher got up at church and had a Band-Aid on his chin. and said, I'm sorry about this Band-Aid. I cut my chin uh, while shaving this morning because I was thinking about my sermon. And a smart aleck from the back said, next time why not uh, think about your chin and cut the sermon. So I tried, no Band-Aid, so maybe I cut the sermon this morning a little bit. But if you could... Bear with me just a little bit here. We're going to talk this morning about hide and seek. Hide and seek. And you say, well, Micah, how in the world are you going to bring that out of the Bible in your message this morning? Well, just hang on. We'll get there. But how many of you ever played the game of hide and seek? Right? How long has it been? A couple of years? A couple of days, Mark? A couple of, uh, a couple of weeks? Uh, we love to play it with the kids with the kids when the electricity goes out. Did anybody ever do that? That's the best time in the world to play hide and go seek because it's usually the evening and night and it's dark in the house and you get to play with flashlights and, and, you, and you go through the house and, and playing it, it, playing hide and seek with the, with the kids is fun. I'm 33 year old and it's still fun. I, I enjoy doing that. Uh, Abby's 31. We talked about that on the way this morning. And uh, so don't let her tell you that She's not, but but as 31 and 33 year old adults, we still enjoy playing hide and go seek with, with the kids. Except for when you're on Sam's team. Sam Sam's team is not as fun to play hide and seek with. He uh, is a little impatient. Um, sometimes he'll rat you out of your hiding hole. Um, he gets there, and, and Annabelle's got him trained, and I don't know how she's done this, but Sam will. And about to holler out Marco, and he'll holler out Polo from the hiding spot. So I don't know how that works, but uh, but sometimes with Sam, if you're against him, it's pretty easy because if you run off and, and leave him, if his teammate does, he goes back and hides at the same spot the next time. So he's a creature of habit. But hide and seek is, is enjoyable, except for one time in the Bible. And if you've got your Bibles, turn them into Genesis chapter three. Genesis chapter 3, and we're going to read verses 8, 9, and 10. So, it's not hard to find an open Bible, about three pages up. Or if you don't have it, it's on the screen here. Genesis chapter 3, verses 8, 9, and 10 says, And, eight, it says, and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord... God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden and was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. This morning, church, I've yet for the life of me tried, I've tried to figure out, and I've been guilty myself when I try to hide myself from the Lord. Do you make me guilty of hiding yourself or trying to hide yourself from the Lord? Sometimes we get into struggles for our life and, and, and places in our lives where we're not living like we should be. Agree? It doesn't matter how close your walk is. You get into a part of your life where you're not living exactly like you should be. And in that part of your life, you try to hide yourself, don't you? Because we're ashamed sometimes because we know we should be acting better. Because we know we should be doing better. And we hear the, and those footsteps from the Lord coming. That, that, that voice off in the distance coming and say, Micah, what's up? What's up with you? Where have you been? And we've hid our, tried to hide ourselves from the Lord. Well, let me ask you a question this morning. How many of you all uh, agree that uh, God is our creator? How many of you all believe that God is all powerful? How many of you believe that God is all knowing? All seen. Then why in the world are we trying to hide things from you? We just answer our own questions. Sometimes we try to try to fool ourselves and, 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 and think, well, 
I'll just lay low right here, and God will skip over me to the next person. It's kind of like a tornado in a valley. We're hoping that, 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 that it'll just jump right over us to the next one. But that's not the way it is, is it, folks? This morning we know we've just answered ourselves and believed that God is all-knowing and all-seeing. There's nothing we can do that, that can hide it from Him. There's nothing that, 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 no couch that we can crawl in behind, no closet that we can shut the door to, no bed that we can crawl under, and I keep crawling under no bed anyway, but no bed that we can crawl under that God doesn't know where we're at. That goes the same for our Christian walk, folks. There's no spot that we can get in in our, in our Christian walk that God doesn't know where we're at. The Bible says He knows every intent of our heart, doesn't it? So how's our intent this morning? It doesn't matter what we're trying to play, if we're trying to play church, if we're trying to impress somebody at church, or, or, or what the deal is. He knows our intent of our heart, and we can't hide things from Him. We can't hide our disgraceful living, or, or whatever that is, we can't hide it from Him. Let's take it a step further. Let's, let's, let's take it to Alex time this morning. How many of y'all this morning are playing some Christian hide and seek? How many of y'all this morning are, are playing some Christian hide and seek and you say, Michael, what in the world are you talking about? This morning, folks, I'm asking how many of you have got things going on in your life that you know don't need to be there, that you're trying to hide from God, but yet you've raised your hand and answered that you know that He's all knowing, that He's all seen, that He's all powerful, that He's, that he's everywhere. He's a step ahead of us, ain't He? Should be. There's nothing this morning, folks, that we can hide from God. But without dedication and improving our relationship with Christ, we do a whole lot more hiding than we do seeking. Let's get real this morning. Let's get real tonight. I want you to be honest with yourself. You feel like, if you feel like raising your hand, that's the first step right there. How many of you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt this morning, that there's things that you've been hiding from God instead of seeking Him on it. Amen. I'm there. I'll raise both of them. There's times in my life that I've, I've tried to hide something from God knowing it. I've been raised in church my whole life. That's my first interaction with public, I'm sure, from when I was a baby was at church. And there's things in my life that I've tried to hide from Him knowing that well, there's no use in it because He already knew it before I was going to do it. He knowed it before I, I, I stepped foot in that direction that I shouldn't be going. He was there telling me, Micah, I don't think you should do this. I don't think you should do this. Micah, you're fixing to mess up. Anybody ever heard that? Micah, you're fixing to, I mean, just wipe your stuff out. This is wrong. You shouldn't be doing this. I'm thinking, Lord, I'll just, I, I'm all right. You know, it's almost to that point of, Lord, I know more than you do. I'm not going to listen, right? Is that not to that point? And I think, ah, he'll forget about it. I'll hide it from him. I'll tuck it right under. Annabeth tries that sometimes. Ask her about hiding stuff in her closet. Mom has her clean her room and she'll just throw it in the closet. I'll hide it in there and think, and knowing good love, Mom, Agnes going to go through her room with a fine tooth comb and make sure everything's in the exact spot because she's just that way. <laughs> But yet, you go to Annabeth's closet and look. She's been busted three or four times in the last week. You pull it open and there it is again. That's the way we are, right? We've been busted with it two or three times from God and, and yet we're still opening that closet door and giving it a good kick. I can remember when I was little, and this is disgusting, and please don't judge me on it. No, I would be embarrassed. You'd be embarrassed, hell. <laughs> Maybe even more. <laughs> but I can remember in my room, my mom's fixing me embarrassed. as he's, he's fixing me embarrassed, and I should be. I can remember in my bedroom, I had some, some big drawers there of a desk. And I heard mom one day holler out, Michael, Jeremiah, Dunford, you get in here right now. And you know when they use the middle name, it's going to be bad, right? <laughs> when they pull out the middle name, it's fixing to get real for sure. And I walked in that room, you know, and you kind of do a peek around the corner before you go in because you don't know if you really are want to get more in trouble for not listening to her hollering at you or for what you're fixing to find out when you get in there. 
And she had pulled up in one of those drawers, and lazy, nasty me had been eating in my room. And I was told to clean my room, and all 20-something steps to the kitchen from my room, I didn't want to make. So I just put those dishes right down in that drawer. (laughs) So there was probably cures to something growing on those dishes down there that she made me get rid of. I was just a scientist before my time. That's what it was. But but I thought I'd had it hid from her. But let me tell you something this morning, folks. God's a whole lot sharper than you moms are. And they're pretty sharp. There's nothing in your life that you can hide from Him. I think the, the first night of, of the revival that I got to come to, for the day we preached on surrender, and this morning, there's probably some people in here that need to surrender something to Him and get it out of their lives because you're not hiding it from Him. You may hide it from me. You may hide it from Dad. You may hide it from, from me and your spouse. But it's not hid from Him. And I guarantee you, He's calling you out on it if you just pay attention to this. I guarantee you that He's wanting you to say, to, to say I'm giving it to you, Lord. I don't want it anymore. It's something that's bogged me down in my life, bogged me down in the relationship, and I don't want it anymore. I'm going to give it to you. I'm tired of fooling with it. I'm tired of it. Here's a question to ponder. Another act. Why is it sometimes when things are going good in our Christian walk, in our life in general, that we tend to do a whole lot more hiding from it than seeking it? You ever notice that? I'd say in, 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 in all the churches that, I, that I've been to all the years, when, they're, when the people's lives are going smoothly, they hit about 40 to 50% of the church services that they're supposed to go to. You ever notice that? Outside. When things are going good in their life, they tend to forget, forget the one that made it good. And when things start getting a little rough and rocky, and we're not trying to hide those things from Him in our lives, they get a, it gets a little rough, and, and we tend to draw ourselves back. You'll watch people, and I'm, I'm a people watcher. Is anybody else a people watcher? I could go to Walmart and just sit in the parking lot and watch people. Abby says I'm old. But, but I like to just, I mean, people are funny creatures. But anyway, when, 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 you, when you get to watching people and they're tight and they start to struggle a little bit, man, they'll, buy, they'll be the first one in the parking lot coming into church. I'm not saying that's a, a bad thing. I'm, I, that's good that they know they need to draw closer. But think with me for a minute. Do you think that, that the valley that they're in right there in their life, or you're in or whatever, do you think you would be in it maybe as deep, maybe as rough? You haven't been trying to hide stuff, from right? Just been up, up and honest and open with it. Because he already knows it. He already knows it. Why are you trying to hide it? And maybe if they had they'd drawn themselves nearer before they'd gotten the valley, maybe they wouldn't have gotten the, you wouldn't have gotten the valley to begin with. Maybe the reason that that, that you're in a, a, a predicament this morning, whatever's going on in your life. Maybe the reason that you're there is because you've cut him out of it. There's things in your life you're trying to hide from him. And he's ready to call you out. Maybe he's ready to get your attention. I'll get their attention one way or another. You know? We spend too much time, church, trying to hide our shortcomings. We spend too much time trying to hide our inconsistencies our inadequacies and failures when we should be seeking the Lord. We need to do a lot less hiding and a whole lot more seeking. Because we need to be seeking His face. We need to be seeking seeking Him for approval. We need to be seeking Him for His faithfulness. We need to be seeking Him for His sustaining power. We need to be seeking Him this morning for His steadfastness. We need to be seeking Him this morning for His grace. We need to be seeking Him this morning for His presence in our lives. We need to be seeking Him 
Not because that's what we're supposed to do. It's our turn. You know how you switch turns, you know, in hide and seek? See, he seeked us out first. He? It's our turn to seek him. You see, we, we were hidden from him for however long in our life. We, we hid ourselves from him when we were living in sin and, and in sinners before we give our heart to him. He sought us out. He played that game of hide and seek and he found us. And we accepted him. We're God. I'm yours. That hide and seek game should be over as far as that, that side, that way. It should be over. It's time for us to seek him. He's not hiding. He's right there. As Mickey said when he's testifying this morning, he's there in the good times and bad. He's just as close to you this morning as you'll let him be. He's just as close in, in, in your life as you'll let him be. You're just as close following him down that Christian path as you want to be. I want to be so close that I can feel the dust coming up off his sands. Every step he takes, I want to have to be wiping my face, wiping the dirt off because I'm that close to his wall. Church this morning, are you tired of hiding? And ready to seek you? Are you tired of hiding the, the things in your life and, and are, are ready to seek Him? I think we need to be a little more like Sam Sam in the hide and seek game. I think, I think in our Christian walk we need to be just a little bit more. Let's not stay hid so long that He gives up trying to find us. Let's not be afraid to, to look up and say, Hello. We can say, here we are, Lord. Right here. I'm the one that's needing help. I'm the one that, that's in a rut. I'm the one that's in a valley, Lord. I'm the one that's never given my life to you, but I'm ready to today. Lord, it's not that, that life is, is, is not going to still have trials and tribulations. You know what the best thing about being saved? You know what the trials and tribulations is before? You didn't have him to turn to. After you get saved, you'll still have trials and tribulations. But he's there fighting with you. And any fight that I've ever been in, it's better to have a buddy whipping on one other person than go man to man by yourself. I'll take two on one odds any day. This morning, church. It's time to be a little bit more like Sam Sam and hide and seek and, and, and do a lot less hiding and a whole lot more seeking. Do a lot less hiding of the things in our life because they're not really hid. Who are we kidding? We just raised our hand and said He knows it all. He knows everything. We've not hid it. We're hurting ourselves as the only person we're hurting. Because we're hindering ourselves from having a relationship with Christ that He wants to have with us. We're hurting ourselves from having that walk with God that, that He wants to have with us. This morning, let's be a church that's not afraid to seek. To seek God's face. To seek a better walk with Him. To seek the will of the Lord in our lives instead of our own will. To seek out, to see people saved, to spread our testimony, to spread His love, to seek to see our church prosper and grow, to seek out church family, to give them encouragement, because that's what we're supposed to do. And to seek to give God our all. Because God gave His all for us. His only Son. That's what the Bible tells us. What it's His only begotten Son that, that He gave up because He knew what was going to happen. He gave it up for us to seek us out. Church, this morning, let's stop hiding and start seeking.
start seeking His face, start seeking His will in our lives as we stand.